I am uh, Dr. Bharat K. Kadadi, consultant, hand, wrist and brachial plexus surgeon practicing in uh, Bengaluru for the last two decades. I am associated with uh, Manipal Hospital Malayshwaram for more than a decade now. So, hand is the functionally the one of the most important parts of the body, economically and functionally the most important parts of the body because without hand, you just can't do anything in your day-to-day -day activities. Imagine a single finger or the part of the hand is, or wrist is injured, you cannot use it to your day-to-day -day activities like brushing your teeth, washing your face or even having your <coughs> breakfast, it becomes so difficult. So, wrist is a complex joint because it has got a polyaxial range of movement in a polyaxial direction. So, you got flexion that is wrist flexion, wrist extension, ulnar deviation, radial deviation and circumduction. Any person in his lifetime moves the wrist for more than 5 to 10 million times. So, you know how important it is, how stable it is and remember if anybody complains of any pain in the wrist joint, it becomes extremely difficult to carry out the routine activities. And the common causes for pain in the wrist are mainly, it can be classified into the radial sided pain towards the radius, that means towards the thumb, the radial sided wrist pain or it could be a central causes of wrist pain, that means in the center or it could be the along the little finger, the ulnar sided wrist pain, that is the common causes, the radial sided, the central causes or the ulnar sided wrist pain. The radial sided causes uh, commonly you might have seen people, you know, with overuse of the wrist, they can develop what you call decreased tenosynovitis, people using a computer for long hours, people doing, you know, boring activities, uh, usage of the basically hand, you know, day to day household activities like, you know, uh, housemaker using her hand frequently for uh, cooking and so many other activities at home. They can develop what you call a decurrent stenosynovitis where the extensive tendons to the thumb can get Im impacted here because of the band and then compression causes pain. That can be excruciating pain. Many times it needs rest, injections or you know, physiotherapy and if it does not work then we do a released surgical release. Then other causes of pain and numbness in the hand and wrist is basically the carpal tunnel syndrome where there is a compression in the median nerve in the wrist region because of the volar carpal ligament. This can be seen in people with hypothyroid or people working with computer for long hours, in people working with vibratory machinery. They have severe pain and numbness in the night. They just cannot sleep. So when you ask them, uh, one simple thing, one simple diagnostic aspect is when you ask them, doctor, I cannot sleep because of severe numbness and pain. That's the moment you say that, you know that this is the median nerve which can be compressed. So, we confirm that by doing a nerve conduction studies, which will confirm the compression of the median nerve. And then if it is so bad that it does not subside with medicines and physiotherapy, then we do a minor surgery called carpal tunnel release surgery, where we release the band compressing the nerve and the best compliment you get is the patient, the next day after surgery, the patient tells you, doctor, I had the most peaceful sleep in so many years. And we, going to the next level, we also do it what you call an endoscopic carpal tunnel. Endoscopic, we, through the minimally invasive technique, as you all know, that arthroscopy and endoscopy, where you put in a needle attached to a camera inside the joint. Similarly, we pass in a scope under the carpal tunnel and then there is an arthroscopic knife, we just release the band that is called endoscopic carpal tunnel release. So, the other common conditions in the wrist are you can have patients with scaphoid fracture very common you see patients developing fall on the outstretched hand, fall while playing cricket or any sports activity for that matter, landing on the it is called fall on the outstretched hand. So, one of the commonest injuries is at the base of the thumb, the trapezium or the scaphoid wrist radius fractures. So, when you have a scaphoid fracture the most interesting part of this is it get missed out in the initially one to two months. It just gets missed out because many of us think it is sprain or you will be able to do your activity with mild pain and then when the pain comes back two to three months later, then you know you do an x-ray and have a look then the fracture by the time it was already gone for non-union. So, it is very important to address this pain in the wrist immediately so that you do not go in for a, do not neglect this condition and go in for a non-union because once it goes for a non-union, the only treatment for a scaphoid is surgery where you fix the scaphoid with a screw, a special screw called a uh, headless compression screw or a Herbert screw and then aim at union because if it does not unite, then it can cause trouble the whole wrist, the whole wrist can go in for wrist arthritis, mid-carpal arthritis. 
The other common condition we see in the wrist is called the lunate. Uh, avascular necrosis of the lunate called the keen box. This is seen in young individuals, very common in ladies. And so many medical uh, students have operated with keen box because this, this can be because of the repeated stress they are undergoing or it could be because of the ulnar variance. Many times the wrist and the ulna should be of equal length. But sometimes what happens, the wrist is longer than the ulna. The radius is longer than the ulna. It causes pressure over the lunate and they are prone for keen box. 60-70% of them have a, a, a negative ulnar variance. So when these conditions, so often it progresses to stage 1, 2, 3, 4 is arthritis. So before they go into arthritis, we can actually do a minor surgery to revascularize the lunate. So we level the bone leveling procedures called level the radius and ulna by a small osteotomy and plating. And then take blood supply is a small thin like a thread, no? blood vessel goes into the bone uh, with the blood vessel here. You pick it up and then place it on the lunate. That's called a bone grafting, with a vascularized bone grafting technique. So that's it's called a, uh, the keen box, treatment of keen box and do very well. In two, three to six months time, the pain goes away and the lunate can get revascularized in six to eight months time. And you might have seen people with playing tennis or badminton and having severe wrist pain on the ulnar aspect, the ulnar side of the wrist called the ulnar side of the wrist pain. It's very painful because it can also happen even by pulling a heavy trolley bag, you're traveling uh, abroad with a heavy, you know, uh, trolley bags and then you try to pull or even when you're parking your bike, you can twist your uh, hand called wrist pain or even when you bowl or fall from the hand uh, in sports injuries or even in road traffic accidents. So this is called a triangular fibrocartilage complex in the wrist. So it takes the shock on the ulnar aspect of the wrist. So this is very important. So that is the ligament called the menis uh, meniscus homolog where that can get injured from the bone called ulna. It gets pulled off and they have severe pain. You can go on for some time. Mild sprains, you can treat them with splinting and physiotherapy. But if the ligament is torn away from the bone, we do an MRI and confirm that. And then what we do, a wrist arthroscopy. That's the uh, latest technology we've been using for last few years now, where we put in a small 2.5 millimeter needle inside the joint, connect it to a camera, look at the whole joint. You can see the 360 degrees, you can see the whole joint in the with the help of the uh, fine arthroscope, 2.4 and 1.9 uh, mm arthroscope. And then from outside, we can pass in a suture, hold the, uh, pass the suture and then tighten it. Trans to, you can tighten it to the bone also. So they get, once they get, uh, the ligament is repaired, you immobilize for almost four to six weeks and then physiotherapy for four to six weeks. And then we have patients after TFCC uh, repair, getting back to their previous level of activity like 20 uh, no, uh, kilos or 20 to 40 kilos of weightlifting, cross training those kind of activities, yes. Some of the other common conditions in the wrist, you see a bump in the wrist. It's called a swelling or a bump coming from the wrist. Many of you, when you bend or flex the wrist, you can see a bump there. And it goes unnoticed for months together. And sometimes when it can cause pain. When it grows in size or when it impinges in the joint, it causes pain. It's called a ganglion cyst. One of the commonest swelling in the wrist joint is called a ganglion cyst. It's a water-filled balloon coming all the way from the joint because the capsule is torn, it gets expanded like a balloon and then projects in the wrist called a water-filled balloon or a ganglion cyst. So if it is painful or growing in size, we do a minor surgery to excise this uh, ganglion cyst. And with this latest technology of arthroscopy, we can also do a pass in a arthroscope and then excise it to a arthroscopically. A, we just marginalize the ganglion and then make sure that it does not recur. And we start immobilizing as early as 2 to 3 weeks after the ganglion excision. And there are so many other conditions in the wrist like, you know, there can be, because there are many bones involved, even the conditions are also more. For example, you have a scaphalonate dissociation where after an injury, you might not have a scaphoid fracture, but you can have a ligament injury. So injuries can be either bony injuries or a ligament injury. When you have a ligament injury, the force passing through the two bones called scaphoid lunate. So these two bones always move together. So once the ligament in between these two is disrupted, so the scaphoid flexes and lunate extends. So they move in different directions causing a severe pain, instability and left alone it can go in for arthritis of the wrist. So this has to be addressed early and again they have stages of that 1, 2, 3, 4. Depending on the stage we can also do a arthroscopic uh, ligament repair and treat. If they come in late stages like stage 4 then we can take in a graft passing through these ligaments and then also repeat. Uh, repair and then, then mobilize them with a good rehabilitation or a hand physiotherapy. 
the other conditions we see is um, tumor swelling in the wrist joint like you have a enchondroma coming in the capitate scaphoid or a osteochondroma in the scaphoid which can cause impinge the movements affect your day to day activity which can be confirmed with an x ray or maybe you might have to go in for further investigation like mri scan have a look and once you know that there is a swelling coming from the particular bone like capitate or a scaphoid or a lunate then you go if it is painful you go and do a minor surgery where curate the bone put in some bone graft and they do pretty well but you have to rule out other conditions like you know in the wrist joint like rheumatoid arthritis infective conditions like tuberculosis because people having non specific pain and inflammation all over the wrist so when you have a condition like that then you must rule out what you call rheumatoid arthritis in today's world there are millions and millions of patients with rheumatoid arthritis having pain in both the hands both the wrist joints both elbows both shoulders it's symmetrical presentation commonly seen between the age of 22 to 50 years ladies is more of commonly affected than men so rheumatoid arthritis is a condition where it needs to be treated with a good medication it's called a disease modifying rheumatoid drugs or a, the biological drugs for rheumatoid which can be controlled sometimes when that stage advances to affect the joint or the cartilage then we can do in a arthroscopic synovectomy biopsy confirm the disease and then further process and treat it when you go in for a stage the last stage of arthritis we can always put in a freshen up the cartilage and put in a plate and put in the called wrist arthrosis wrist arthrosis is one of the very good um, surgical procedures for a very unstable and arthritic wrist so that gives excellent stability for the wrist so it's very important to keep the wrist stable so we immobilize in 10 15 degrees of extension and then they able to do the day to day activity so that way so wrist being a complex joint and even sometimes the radio couple arthritis initial stages this can impinge and causes pain between radial scaphoid so we again do an arthroscopy we can trim this bone if this bone is longer we can also arthroscopically trim this bone called wafers procedure this is called radial stylodectomy so so many procedures which can be done arthroscopically and also by open technique so the whole idea is to get the wrist back to uh, pain free pain free range of motion number 1 number 2 stability that means they should be able to get back to their previous level of activity like you know whatever lifting weight riding bike or even working on the computer and that's our aim is to in the hand and wrist clinic where we aim to a patient uh, make the patient pain free and get back to their previous level of activity by treating the corresponding conditions uh, in the month of august 2 2020 i visited manipal hospital with complaints of pain and numbness of the right hand and accordingly i was asked to consult dr bharat kadadi who happened to be the orthopedic surgeon who specialized in uh, hand and upper limb surgery accordingly he advised me to undergo a surgical procedure of carpal tunnel release and arthroplasty of the carpal, first carpal metacarpal joint as it had fourth degree arthritis accordingly the surgery was done in the month of september 2020 and after that the recovery process started i was advised to show my hand of progress of recovery to the to, to the hand surgeon every week practically and which i did very obediently and he also had followed up my case very well and the added value was of the visit to the department of physical medicine and rehabilitation in manipur hospital for occupational and physiotherapy as per the instructions of dr bharat kadali a few words about this outstanding uh, skilled uh, hand surgeon dr bharat kadali to my surprise and pride he discovered me as his teacher way back in the 90s as a student of uh, undergraduate student of mysore medical college having met him i was overwhelmed and so did he also and uh, the issue which came up it became very confident much more confident of the very this and seeing him also and uh, uh, as we all know the hand is a very uh, important uh, component of the human body meant for precision grip and being a very highly vascular structure as well as abundant nerve supply and there are nearly about uh, 20 delicate uh, intrinsic muscles in the hand as an anatomist i would like to make my own feelings get expressed and and uh, seeing the outcome of the surgery was a big challenge for me but having met dr bharat kadadi made me uh, forget the possibilities of anything going to happen to me 
because he was very, very sure that he's going to give back my hand to normalcy. And really, it happened so. So after going through this, uh, if you have any doubts regarding the compl complex problems of the wrist, you can always pose in your questions into the chat box and then we will do our best efforts to explain the causes and the treatment options. And if you like it, you can share with your colleagues and friends so that you spread the message that this is a complex condition and can be treated with the ease.